Hello, hello, my nasties. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to our first color and chat of the year. We will be coloring today, of course, in the lovely, the fabulous, the funky, the funky fabulous, I should say, Ms. Cosmetica. Long overdue as this book was released at a strange time, which is why it is overdue. Uh, right at the beginning of December is when this book was released. And I just, I told you guys before, but if you've never heard me say it, winter, uh, specifically the holiday season, I tend to hibernate for about three weeks. I, I try to stay off social media. I try to go out as little as possible. The crowds, the chaos, just the stress, the chaotic energy, I, I hate it all, right? So I, I, I just try to step back and I wanted to circle back to Cosmetica when things calm down a little bit and well, it's after the holidays. So hello, here we are. And today I've already pre-selected the page though I have not pre-selected the color. So we're gonna do that together today. Um, I was in the mood to do something very hair intense today because I did a little, I did a quick little watercolor today. Isn't she cute? very, you know, retro-influenced, retro-inspired um, thing. I don't know what else to call my work other than things, but I'm in the mood to do this one today. And because this book is obviously retro-inspired, we are going to go with a funky retro color palette, which is likely going to entail quite a lot of neon. So um, we're going to grab pink, yellow, orange, and you know what? Let's grab a couple gradient colors. Let's not do purple today. I think we're going to do with the... I know I've done this color palette, ad nauseum, pinks, oranges, you know, magentas, yellows. Warm colors are my thing. Black coffee today. I'm super bummed out. I went to the grocery store and I forgot to grab whipped cream. And I'm in the mood for whipped cream. So... Uh, let's, let's grab another color to play with. How about, I was going to say green, but I use that a lot as well. I want a wild card color in here. So let's, let's whip out. See, this is why I don't like to get on camera prior to having selected the colors because then there's a whole lot of dead space in the video. I mean, I guess if you don't mind the dead space, great. But if you're one of those people who does mind, just, just fast forward, just fast forward. Don't huff and puff and just, just fast forward. All right. So how about, you know, why don't we do some reds? What in keeping with this one today, this watercolor that I did today, it was supposed to be pink and purple. And then I thought, eh, let's put some, let's put some red on there. So, so yes. Okay, fine. Whatever. Red is not out of the ordinary and extreme, but I don't usually use that combo. Uh, actually, I don't think I ever have. I've done pinks, oranges, yellows, and then some warm purples, but I don't think I've ever done that. I don't, maybe, maybe uh, we'll toss something else in there later. I don't, I don't know, but I don't want to spend too much time on this. You know, practice what I preach. I like to tell you guys, don't agonize, just make a mess, do your thing, la 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 la. So let us begin, and I'm going to start with the makeup today. I'm going to let the makeup inform the rest of the page. And I have this vision for this makeup where I want it to be an airbrushed, kind of a watercolory, bleedy look. Will we be able to achieve it? Well, we're going to find out. But we're going to work shit with this neon orange all of the time. You'll pardon my language, but I've had it with this damn marker. This is the second time that I've purchased this marker. And, and you know what? I just realized that I think it's the chisel tip. It's just the chisel side of it because the brush marker, the brush side's not doing that. Okay. So maybe I won't get that angry today. But there's just something weird about the, the orange Copic markers that just suck. It irritates me so bad. Okay. Oh God, Butterfingers today. And, and here she is using the chisel tip again. I 
I know. People are probably like, Carly, you're always bitching and crying about the Copics. Stop using them. No, it's not all of them. I like the Copics in general. It's just some of these colors are freaking... They're out of control annoying. Okay, so we're going to leave that as is. I, I, don't want, I don't want symmetry today. In most cases, I tend to be quite allergic to symmetry in my real life. So let's, let's do pink makeup on this side. And then we'll have the orange bleeding like this. See, that looks cool. But now, okay, let's, let's pull some of that pink over here as well. Now what I'm wanting to do, though, is I need something to pull these colors together, some sort of a shader color. So uh, let's see what we're gonna, how we're gonna handle this here because I've not figured it out yet. But this is giving me that kind of dreamy, airbrushy 80s kind of a look, which is perfect, that's what I want. But I, I need something, I need something. This is not the one, <laughs> but it's what I grabbed. It, today's just one of those days, guys. I just wanted to sit down and color for a little while. Um, I just need to clear my head. Nothing nothing bad is going on right now. It was just one of those days where, <sighs> right? I've had a lot on my mind. And not, not, not bad. It's just a lot of chaos. And so I would like to just quiet the chaos a little bit. Because when you quiet the chaos, it allows you to plan your time better. And right now what I'm needing is to kind of plan ahead a little bit. I need to plan projects. I need to plan life stuff. So, yeah, it's just I'm a little overwhelmed, but not, not in a bad way. It's not a negative overwhelm. It's just Carla needs to slow down and just clear her thoughts so she can think. It's that kind of situation. So it's not bad. I promise. We're good. We are so good. So that and it's also freezing. I turned my my space heater. I don't like to turn on the overhead heater. I just I have a weird thing about heaters. Um, I don't know, and especially old. I, I don't. I, I, it's a weird, irrational distrust for heaters, and I just don't like breathing that air. I don't. It's it's a thing. So I have space heaters instead. And also I like to have cold spaces. See, this is another thing is I like to have cold spaces in my apartment. So I don't like the entire place being heated. Like I know I, I have weird things and that's one of my weird things is uh, I don't like my entire living space to be heated. I don't know, I know it's weird. Well, I guess I can explain it to you this way. You know that feeling you get when you're in a hot room and then you step outside into that crisp night air and it's like, Oh, the air smells clean and fresh. See, that's why. That's why I like to have cold spots, cold rooms in my apartment. So I close the, um, I close my bedroom door on purpose, and then I have the space heaters on in the living room, so that I can go into my room and the air feels and smells cold in there. Yeah, I know some people are probably like, girl. You're a little nutty, and I know, I know, I know, I've been told, but I just, I need that fresh air, okay? I'll even crack a window in the middle of, you know, what I consider to be a freezing night for a few minutes, because I just, I can't deal. I can't deal with not having fresh air and circulation. I feel as though I'm suffocating. If you ever taken one sock off while you're trying to sleep at night but kept the other one on, you know what I mean. It's one of those things. Okay, so the makeup didn't really turn out the way that I wanted it to. So let's see if I can pull more. I was hoping for more of a pink kind of a gradient, which we failed at. And that's okay. That's all right. That's all right. Why don't we do a full-on bleedy watercolor situation, hmm? 
pull some orange into here. And on purpose, I'm leaving these chunks. You see how I'm not blending as cleanly as I typically do? That's okay, I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to play today. Okay, now let's start bringing in some of those reds. Here's what we're gonna do. Is it gonna work? I don't know, but we're gonna do it. And I won't spend too, too much time working because like I said, it's starting to get a little bit too cold here. And it's not just for me, it's for Bentley as well. He loves his space heater and I don't wanna keep his little skinny butt cold. He's okay, he's wearing the sweater and he's cuddled up on the blankets, but he loves his space heater. And who am I to deprive the baby of his baby eater home Bentley? <laughs> he knows the word. So, yeah, I know. He knows the word H-E-A-T-E-R. So I have to be careful. <laughs> Ooh, the red and the pink is fun. super super messy today and it's going by fairly quickly I might even be a little bit slower than I want to be on this but I, I don't want it to be a complete disaster but a little bit of a disaster is okay again I'm practicing what I preach I want you guys to be able to be if not now you know but eventually and if you hope to be as free as I am in my work well, hopefully this will encourage you. You can do whatever the hell you want, obviously. But for those of you who have expressed desire to be more, you know, carefree and playful with your work, well, get off your butt and do as I do. Now, something like this wouldn't be quite as successful if the colors were much more discordant than the ones that I have chosen. Um, so just keep that in mind. You know, if you pull out a bunch of browns and blues and start throwing stuff around and mixing, it's going to become a jumbled mess. But also, if that's what you're going for, more power to you. But what I'm hoping with this is I'm wanting to... I hesitate to say what I'm gonna do, what I want to do, because I'm not sure. You know that things change on a whim over here. But I wanna lay down a super messy foundation of color and then maybe clean up on top of it with additional line work. So that's that's the tentative goal for the moment. Is that gonna happen again? I don't know. But that's the the idea, at least for the moment. I want to do pinks. Let's, let's, how about we go with a darker, darker pinks on this side? Ooh, yeah, that's a nice color. Okay, so I'm gonna. Um, ooh, let's see. These earrings are strange. I design weird jewelry, and then I'm like, wait, how do I maneuver around this? Okay. Pull some of this orange up here. Let's go with. I'm dying for some green. Seriously, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. Some lime green. This needs to get. I feel like I'm constantly reducing the stupid marker. I think I did it on camera in my last vlog, dumbass thing. I'm sorry, but it's frustrating because I do love that color. But I'm liking this neon soup that we have going on here today. Just 
which pinks here. I do have the refills for those markers, but I'm trying to, I'm not wanting to kill my, my rhythm on this one today. like it. Um, I do want to grab, oh, you know what? That marker is dead. I see it in my marker. I have a drawer right here. It's a marker graveyard of things that I need to repurchase, and I see it in there. Okay. Um, as for the background, don't know what I this definitely it's poor thing it is thirsty oh she's thirsty uh you know what oh wait do I not have a refill for that one that one is called shock pink oh no I do we do we do indeed have a refill for her but what do I want to do you know what I'm gonna do which those of you who are timid and don't trust your illustration skills are gonna say, oh my God, I'm not brave enough to do that though. Uh, just try, just try. I don't, I don't wanna put the tiny violins away. I don't wanna hear them, just try. What I'm wanting to do is to expand, is to pull the hair out. I mean, you're gonna see the, the line of this frame here but also who cares so and actually what I should do is use a brush let's see yeah see you can see the frame but I mean Something like that, and I guess we could expand it over here as well, just for a little bit of continuity. Like that. And then, let's see if I can use What if I leave this section? purposely more messy and unfinished then uh, let's not get too ambitious here let's let's not get too crazy because I think I'm wanting to make the this section all black one of my all black fills which I've done pretty often Okay, so yeah, you saw me go a little nuts on this page so far, but that, I mean, that's part of the technique, right? Um, something that gets me with some artists or some people who are learning how to loosen up is that when they see something that is intentionally messy, they agonize over achieving a messy look when it's bizarre psychology because if something is messy, sometimes it may look more complex than it is but at the same time sometimes that complexity comes from doing multiple simple steps and just layering them on top of each other did that make sense uh, I hope so so that's uh how can I demonstrate that or how can I illustrate that okay take uh take the paintings of Jackson Pollock for instance on the surface it seems very simple uh, for those of you who don't know who Jackson Pollock is if you've ever seen a painting that just looked like somebody grabbed a paintbrush and just splattered it and dripped the paint bucket over the place, just a whole bunch of scribble scrabble nonsense, that would be Jackson Pollock or anything that 
emulates that style is a Jackson Pollock-esque technique. It's when you just drip, dribble paint everywhere. That actually takes a lot of effort and a lot of work to do. And also screen printing, you know, people see Andy Warhol and they think, oh, this loser, all he did was copy and like blah, blah, blah. But if you've ever screen printed yourself, you realize how complex it is, especially multi-layered screen prints. It might be, you know, six different colors to you that you're looking at it thinking, oh, it's six colors, big whoop. But to apply those six colors onto a screen print, that's six different screens that need to be aligned just right and then printed on top of each other. It's not just one simple screen print, right? It's it's a simple result, but a complex process, but the process in itself is not complicated. It's just multiple simple steps. One six color screen print takes quite a, a while to produce, but each six, each of the six screens is just one screen with one slight modification. Simple but complex. I'm just going to stop trying to explain that concept. I can already see eyeballs glazing over and ears shutting off, but I'm just, I'm just trying to explain how Bentley's going to serenade us in a second. So for those of you who have shut your ears off, there you go. Wake them up. instigate. I instigate and I'm cool with that. Neighbors probably hate me, but that's okay because you know what? If you've been here for a while, you know how much I love my neighbors, right? Oh, they can all shove it. With the exception of one neighbor, and I'll tell you why. The neighbor that lives on this side of me over here, Here's why I like this guy, because he never bothers me. <laughs> He's never said anything weird. He's never been nosy. He, he keeps to himself. We're very much the same, right? He rocks out to his 80s music sometimes, and what's funny is that sometimes we'll play a little game where he'll be listening to like an 80s Madonna song, and if I have an 80s playlist on, I'll start playing Madonna or start singing and then he'll kind of do the same, but we're not friends. Like we're not buddy buddies. We're just kind of like distant friends through the wall. And here's the creepy part is that we have the same late night pee pee schedule. I don't care if it's midnight, two, four, five in the morning. Every time I'm peeing, I know this is TMI, but when I'm tinkling, I hear him because our bathrooms are attached. Isn't that weird? It's so weird. We're friends on another dimension, apparently, but not in this one. For whatever reason, our energies just didn't align on this plane, <laughs> but maybe on a different one. We're like this or something. I don't know. Very strange. And he's lived there since he's been my neighbor since I moved here it's, it's so maybe it's better that way because every single one of my neighbors with the exception of uh, two that I've ever spoken to I can't stand them right so maybe it's just better. like I'll love you from afar sir we'll, we'll be buddies from afar well from a wall watch and be listening right now well good just so you know sir you're cool okay so what I'm going to do off camera is I'm going to go ahead and fill in the background with black, but what I'm wanting to do also is I would like to add a few more bits of geometric shape here. So. Something like that. Mm, I feel like the angle should be a little steeper. So why don't we go like this. I guess, I guess that's fine. I guess that's okay. We'll try something like that. 
and let's see here. Oh, of course you are. Because of course, because of course, because of course. Okay, another one for the pen graveyard. Did I need to repurchase? I've been using these pens for years. Uh, I have no idea if they are still available. I believe they are. They're essentially the Marvy version of the Micron pen. Microns are, I think, Sakura, Sakura, however that is. Yeah, the Sakura, okay? And then these are the Marvy Uchida. Are, they're the ones, this brand is popular for making the, um, these are called the Le Pen. They're the Le Pen technical pen, but they're famous for the, at least amongst journalers, for the actual, the Le Pen pens, those thin little pens that are popular for journaling, uh, which I do use those. Don't I have one here? Let me show you. this company so if you are familiar if you're a journaler or whatnot this company it's the same marvy so they if you're ever looking for an alternative to a micron that's cheaper this is a good option i like these but what i've noticed over the years is that i think there's less ink in these than there are in microns because i feel microns take a while to die and these tend to die pretty quickly so just keep that in mind it could be all in my head i don't know but it, it just it is what it is okay so I'm going to go ahead because this is going to take quite a while as you know if you've done it yourself I'm going to take some time to fill in that background so I'll see you in six years and we will continue coloring okay so a slight change of plans here shocker shocker I know you're all just as shocked as me so <clears throat> I'm going to try something different, because why not? What I'm going to do is continue the style that I have going on with the figure, meaning I am going to do a full color bleed background. Messy. We're going to keep it messy. I mean, we're still going to keep it cute, but messy. Not thinking too hard, but we're thinking a little bit. So I'm going to do like that. And I'm going to do this around the entire thing. And I keep, I keep using the chisel tip. Okay, so I'm going to do this around the entire figure as opposed to the solid black. Because what I'm going to do instead is do an expressive black background. Carla, what the hell does that mean? I'll show you. I'm going to show you in this quadrant up here so that I can indeed do the rest of it in silence or relative silence anyway because I'm going to be listening to music or something. I don't know. I've not decided yet. <clears throat> but I do want to make sure that the back is pretty well saturated in color because this is not going to be successful if there's not a lot of color back there. It doesn't have to be pretty. I'm okay with seeing the, the felt tip marker lines and all that kind of stuff. But here, let's keep going. We'll do yellow to Sorry for the jiggling. Okay. I am actually using a bit of a heavy hand here because these markers, as you can tell, 
need to be rejuiced, and I will, I will shortly, but for the sake of demonstration of what I'm going to do, I think that's enough. Okay, uh, I, I may actually use a, uh, a little bit more pink up here. Let's go for a different pink too. Let's go for this one. Um, maybe not so much, maybe not so much. Well, here's what I'll do. We'll, we'll force it to work. We'll do a little something like that. And we'll do, keep using that damn orange chisel tip knowing that it doesn't work. Okay. So how about like that? We'll leave it like that and then I'll show you what the idea was for the expressive black outline. So the idea came because of this, just this, this little line, this little swoosh that I put there. And it made me think of postmodern brushstroke artwork, that graphic artwork. Think of those iconic solo cups. It's a white cup with like a teal brush stroke and then with some purple and I think there's some pink on it as well uh that's where the idea came from it's that late 80s early 90s kind of look and so what I'm gonna do is try to be a little loose with it I, I don't necessarily want to replicate a brush tip type of look but something like that and then gosh this may not work at all this but this is something that I may want to explore further in the future so you got to start somewhere you, you can't be afraid to have an idea and then have it fail a few times before you actually achieve the effect that you're going for but you understand what it is that I'm 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 going for right it's kind of um it's not necessarily a Sumi ink look. Uh, Sumi ink, for those of you who are not uh, illustrators or calligraphers, Sumi ink is that it's a char It's an ink. It's a carbon-based ink. So you see it in a lot of Asian artwork and calligraphy where the ink looks almost smoky. That's what this kind of looks like to me. And that's not necessarily what I was going for. I wanted for more of like a dry brushing kind of look. And I've, I've expressed to you all that I'm trying to play with ways of making my marker work look more painterly, more marker-y. And this is one way to achieve that because you can very clearly tell that this was achieved using a felt tip marker. I'm not trying to be careful with the gradients and all that because I have found myself falling into the trap of, I enjoy blending. I love color bleeding. I love blending. I love gradients. I love, I love it all, right? But when I'm when I find myself falling into that hole of trying to replicate that technique over and over and over, I kind of lose the joy of using the material that I'm using because using a marker to make it look like a marker is one thing, but consistently using a marker trying to make it look like a watercolor is something else, right? It's like, well, girl, just use a watercolor. So while I want to continue doing the bleedy, blendy, watercolory marker technique, I want to employ other techniques that are unique to the markers themselves. This like felt brushy type of look. So anyway, she's going to disappear now. I'm going to finish the rest of it, at least the background. And then I will see you soon. I just wanted to interrupt because new development. That's what we do. Okay. I'll see you in a bit. We will be continuing to work on this and we are going to have to put up with the space heater in the background because Mr. Bentley is comfortably sleeping in front of it. So if you hear that noise, it's just, it is what it is. I will not be chit-chatting for too long. I just wanted to give you an idea of what the background looks like. Not quite what I thought I was going to be able to achieve, but getting there, I think it is interesting though. So that is giving me something to look forward to 
in the future. Because I will be trying variations on this technique on my illustration work and other coloring pages. So it's difficult to explain exactly what it is I'm attempting to achieve, but you kind of, you kind of sort of get the gist of it, yeah? Okay, so I'm going to pull out the black glaze pen. I mean, shocker, right? But I want to use the glaze pen, and then I'm going to use the... Oh, somebody decided to get up and get a drink of water. Now you hear space heater, you hear refrigerator humming, and then you hear slurpy, sleepy doggy. He sleeps in front of the space heater, and then he, he gets thirsty, and then he wakes up for a sip of cool water, and then he will plop himself right back in front of the space heater. He's ridiculous. I mean, I get it, it's comfortable. If I wasn't so paranoid of a malfunction, I would probably be napping in front of the space heater as well, but princess paranoia over here. So black glaze pen, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna, she's gonna get the full glossy eye treatment. glossy eyelid I mean and also <clears throat> I'm going to you see right here where I did the little black detail here it's kind of a frame kind of not this little element we will do that in black glaze and then she's gonna get a big old glossy black lipstick treatment those big old juicy lips filler probably who knows ask her and find out or I mean in this case in this book you never know ask him although I suppose it would be him dressed as a her in the, you, you get it you get it ask this creature <laughs> whether or not it's lip filler is it her natural hair is it a wig um, I don't know ask him and see what she says okay so Glossy, 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 glossy. And this is going to get a ton of gold. Well, I'll, I'll say a smattering of gold for now because I do want to put some gold on those little geometric shapes that we added. So I'll show you that. Mm, this is a little, here, let's fill this in a little bit more. Um, yeah, we'll fill it in a bit more. And then if I need to add some more highlights, I'll do it with a gel pen or a paint marker or something. Okay, so let's play with a little bit more Pink. I did reduce this marker a little bit, so she's woken up a little bit. Definitely reduce this one. Okay, and so we are going to do here. It's going to be a solid gold fill. And should I do a base first? Um, no, let's just fill it in. Well, I mean, it won't hurt. It's not a necessary step, but... Sometimes it helps to fill in the marker. Sometimes it makes it look worse. Uh, or not worse, but it makes it not look so great. 
but in some instances like today where there's not a lot of negative space, there's not a lot of blank white space, it's not going to hurt to put just a little bit of foundation behind the glitter. So that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to then go in. This is another part of the process which takes forever. Okay, that is putting my sparkles on everything because I use one of two pens to do my sparkles. I will do the gel pen or I will do the Posca pen. The Posca sometimes can be a bit too thick even though it is the ultra fine. So, or rather just the fine, which one is it? It's the, there's one that's thinner than this but I don't like the ink in it. It's not the same. This is the 0.7, so it is the fine one. Not the finest because again, I hate that one. But I will use the Posca or I will use a white gel pen. I still uh, haven't really found a gel pen that I like a lot. The Uniball, there's, I don't know if it's a Signo or Sino, but that one is a good one. I'm simply out at the moment and I have a number of the white jelly rolls, so I've just been using those. But I haven't found one that's my holy grail yet. The Uniball is just fine. I'll be reordering that one when I run out of the Microns, or rather the Moonlights, but I don't know, white gel pen is just one of those things that I've never been able to find. I'm not dying for one, but it would be nice if I were to find one someday. But um, I'm not dying for it, like I said. Like, I've been dying for my perfect shade of acid green. Ugh. It's forever been the quest, right? But recently, one of you, um, I hope you don't mind the shout out. I mean, assuming that you're watching this. If you don't watch it and you do mind, well, I guess you'll never know. <laughs> but... Shout out to uh, one of my followers on Instagram, and she's also, I believe, still a Patreon patron, Kirsten, girl, hey, hello, if you're watching, shout out to you, but she sent me uh, a brand of markers, I can't remember off the top of my head, I have it uh, written down, I already added it to my art supply list, but she sent me a potential brand of markers that may have something close to the acid gray that I'm looking for, so... I'm excited to try that. Next time I have to place an art supply order, I will definitely be ordering that. Uh, sh I should be placing an order fairly soon-ish. I'm not exactly sure when. I typically place one or two large-ish orders per year through usually Blick. And I'm definitely overdue for an order, but there's nothing that I'm in dire need of right now. I order from several different places, but it tends to happen that once or twice per year there's like a, a big chunk of items that I'm needing and I can purchase them only through Blick. So I believe Blick does carry those markers if I remember correctly. That's where I added them to my list. So once again, Kirsten, thank you for the suggestion. I will absolutely be checking them out because that damn acid green of my dreams it eludes me still so we shall see but there you go uh trust me on camera you are highly unlikely to be able to see what i just did but she's very sparkly in person you know what i'm finding with this camera is that i've changed the setting several times but this camera because it's a newer phone uh the camera likes to record everything automatically in like high resolution hd so it makes everything look far more detailed than it actually is, but then it blurs out things that it shouldn't. In this case, the glitter. The line art is going to look really sharp, and then, like, even my hands, right? I hate the way that it makes skin texture look. It makes your hands look so dry and lizardy, and then, oh, like, facial skin as well. If you have perfect skin, you don't have anything to worry about, but my skin is not perfect. You know, I, I hormonal acne all the time, right? Story of my life. So it just happens, right? And then ugh, it makes everything look so much worse and I fucking hate it. But what are you going to do, right? I can't, you have to see my hands. You have to see what I'm doing. So if I have old witch hands, well, there you go. Secrets out. She's not a witch, but she's a vampire. As if you guys didn't already know that, right? Okay, I'm going to shut my mouth. She needs gold eyes though. She needs gold eyes. I'm going to shut my mouth. I'm going to work on the sparkly bits in the background because there's going to be a lot of them. And then uh, I will catch up with you. We are back. It's the next day. 
let's get sparkly together you guys so she says let's get sparkly but today is a day that I'm wearing less of my obnoxiously sparkly jewelry because you guys know you guys know I like to wear all of mine well can we put this one on how about we put this one on yeah and we'll be there now we're a little bit more sparkly um, my rings are taking a bath right now so that's why I am um, because I wear so many obnoxious rings like this <laughs> I do have to keep them in tippy top shape so you yeah, know they have to be polished and all of that so today we're doing vintage pearl and gold jewelry so a little less sparkly but now I think now I think we're okay we're okay we got that one on there um, so yeah anyway <clears throat> we're in a very vintage mood today let me here let me pull out one of the earrings that I'm wearing very appropriate for the coloring page that I'm working on so I'm wearing these now these are not real gold everything else that I'm wearing is but these are not are you kidding me can you imagine can you imagine <laughs> I had these in actual gold with real precious metals from the 80s or 90s. Oh my god. No, but I do carry these in my store, Coconati, if you are interested. Little 90s flare for you. Now I'm not even going to bother putting those back in my ears. But let's keep it moving. And you know what? Now that I took one of those or took them both off, I like this color palette. Well, this is a bit reggae, right? The red, the gold and the green but with that pastel pink oh, I like that look we almost nailed it here today orange pink red huh anyway so everything everything that I like everything that I do everything that I create is interconnected somehow I tell you I tell you these things Okay, so uh, let's get sparkly. I've already started. I did put some detail work in the background, as you can see, and we're just going to continue on getting sparkly because, to be honest, I don't think I'm going to do... I mean, I know, I know, I know. You guys are probably shaking your head going, Carly, you always say that, you always say that. I say, oh, I don't think I'm going to do anything else on this page. I think we're pretty much done. And then two hours later, it becomes an entirely different animal, right? But no, this time I think I mean it because keeping it simple, simple, relatively speaking, works for this page. So we're just going to chit chat and we're going to sparkle it up. And I don't know what color I'm going to do these earrings. Now that I'm looking at these that I was wearing, should we do green? Should we do like a really cool, I think we're going to do an emerald green. I think we're going to do an emerald green. I think we're going to do it. As arrogant as I know it sounds on the surface, I inspire myself. <laughs> now, if you've been on my channel, if you know me at all, you know that arrogance is not my, that it's not my gig, but it's because of my lifestyle that I have to be all things to myself, right? I have to, I have to worship at my own altar, so to speak. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I posted a post on Instagram, which is likely still up that says something to the effect of, I have to be the dreamer, I have to be the creator, I have to be the wrangler of all of the crazy at the same time, right? And it's, it's very it's very taxing. But, hey, you know, if I had options, if I had a group of people or, you know, a person or two who was inspiring who could help me, that I would never turn it down. It's just, circumstances are what they are. I, I feel as though people out there don't understand that. Um, people assume that I reject on purpose, that it's some sort of defense mechanism. And it's like, why do people have to look so deep into what is actually quite shallow, right? Not to say that I'm shallow, but I'm not, okay, maybe I am a complex individual. I mean, we all, most of us are, right? But I don't actively push people away. I don't, it's none of that. I've I've said it a million times. I thankfully, thankfully, have never suffered any sort of traumatic events in my life that have resulted in I being this sort of hermity, lonery type of individual. It has nothing to do 
with traumas, with psychological nonsense, none of that. I've My life has been pretty dull, pretty, well, I shouldn't say dull, I should say uneventful in those areas, which is good. I'm not complaining about that. It's just, it's just in my very nature to be this way. And unfortunately, those of us who are truly like this, you know, those of us who don't do it as an act, you know, oh, I just want to be a mysterious loner artist. Oh, it's just an act. Those of us who are actually on a molecular level this way, we're just accustomed to it. It's just the way that it is. And we have to, we have to be able to motivate ourselves to do everything that we need to do. Do we falter sometimes? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I catch myself getting distracted by things I shouldn't be distracted by when I could be working and being more productive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I fall off the I fall off the horse fairly often. More often than I would like to admit. But the trick is is if you fall off the horse, get back on and ride it harder, right? So that's what I do. If I if I find myself slacking for a day or two, oh, I'll pick it up. I'll pick it up. I will pick it up. I will pick up the pace and make up for lost time for sure. Speaking of horses, I have never been on a horse. True story. I have an irrational, fear is a strong word, but horses make me uncomfortable. Don't know if I've ever talked about that on this channel. Horses are beautiful. I love animals. They're giant. They're majestic. They're all the things. I loved my little ponies when I was a wee lass, which comes as no surprise. I, I always played with animals, stuffed animals, figurines, that sort of thing, um, instead of Barbies and baby dolls. I had a few Barbies, but they were kind of the, the oddball Barbies. I had like the, the mermaid Barbies with all the hair and all the craziness. And I had a vet, a animal doctor, a vet, Barbie. I had a, was it a teacher? Yeah, I had the teacher Barbie because I loved her dress. <laughs> she was wearing a black dress. I will never forget it. Um, and it was a it was a vintage Barbie too. That that's the thing is that I was born at a time where um like vintage and vintage revival Barbies were all the rage. So like all of the Barbies from like the early to mid 90s, 80s were all like coming back. It was yeah, it was weird. So I I was able to actually have vintage revival Barbies and then true vintage Barbies that were handed down to me. It was a weird anyway. It was a weird time, but all of that to say, I had the the cool, fashionable Barbies. Those are the only ones that I was interested in. And and all the Barbies that came with little pets, right? I loved those. And baby dolls were not my thing. I know this is getting into a weird conversation that maybe we have or have not spoken about in the past. I'm not sure. And I distinctly remember that I did not like playing with baby dolls. They would actually make me cry. Um... I, I just, I, it, I don't know. I've, I've never been interested in babies, right? Like, I've never felt that maternal instinct towards humans. I love little little things. Like, I love baby clothes, right? Like, I love it when people are pregnant. Now, don't touch me with that pregnant belly because, true story, it has happened once where it actually caused me to have a visceral reaction. I actually gagged and nearly vomited when a pregnant woman rubbed her belly up again. Like, I don't even want to relive it because my eyes are getting watery. I just, my body does not, it does not compute. I think I'm, I'm, I'm one of those humans who is ready to take that level and be like, hey, can we just not reproduce any more things? Um, no offense to anybody who's a mother who's pregnant. It has nothing to do with you. It is entirely a physiological issue with me. <laughs> but now here's the thing. If you get pregnant and we're buddies, I'm going to shop for all the cute baby clothes for you. Don't touch me with that belly. But here's a fabulous gift of all kinds of cute baby clothes, right? I know it's a, it's a whole thing with me, but anyhow, uh, I would cry when people would gift me baby dolls. So my relatives 
knew better and they wouldn't. They'd give me stuffed animals, right? They knew right away, like, Carla's a weirdo. She doesn't like people. No more baby dolls for her. <laughs> but um, I had one doll, one doll that I remember loving so much. And it's because it, it was a baby. But this thing looked like a drag queen. It had, like, if you bopped her on the head, she had a little crown on her head that would sparkle. And she had tin, like, foil in her hair. And it was a vintage doll. It was a vintage doll. But I was lucky enough to acquire her in the package, which, of course, I destroyed. But, uh, oh, I love that doll. It was great. It was great. And it was a baby wearing a ton of makeup, too, which is, that would never fly today. God bless the 80s. Or actually, I believe that doll was from the 90s at some point, And it was gifted to me later. I don't remember. Anyway. Doll talk over. Oh, Carla and her tangents. But hey, every time I go on a little tangent, you little you learn a little bit more about me, right? I really hope nobody comes into the comments and starts bitching and complaining about what I said about babies because I made myself exceedingly clear. So if somebody's going to come in here and say something stupid, well, I'll probably just block you. I don't need to explain myself when I was quite clear. If I'm clear when I say something and I'm, it's clear enough what I'm saying for the majority of people to understand what I'm saying, there's no need for me to further explain. It's just block, delete, get out. You're not worth my time, right? That's the one thing about the internet. Well, the one thing. There's many things about the internet that I can shake a finger at, but people will say to me, oh, I want to start a YouTube channel, but I'm shy and I'm afraid of what other people think. Well, that's the thing. If you are not going to be unable to break out of the worry of what other people think, I would highly advise that you not start a channel. And if you do start a channel and people start misconstruing what you say, well, take that as an indicator that you need to become a better communicator. <clears throat> or you can take the attitude like me where it's like, hey, I can be as clear as possible. And if you still don't understand the point of what I'm saying, well, that's a you problem, not a me problem. There's a bizarre entitlement to people online where the audience feels as though they can dictate what a creator enjoys or what a creator says, like what sort of opinions they can have. It's so weird to me. Is this pen dying or what? I'm telling you, I don't like these white gel pens. They're okay, they're just not that great. <laughs> I talk as though I have such a huge audience, right? You know, I used to think up until pretty recently, I thought that people were not coming to my Instagram or coming to my YouTube because they simply didn't enjoy my personality, which is very definitely true. I mean, absolutely, that's a huge factor. But I'm noticing that even people who I know or who I watch, who have larger audiences, their pages are not growing at all either or very slowly. It's weird. I don't know if it's an algorithm thing or what's going on, but, oh man. Gone are the days of cultivating an audience, right? So thank you all for being here and for liking what I do because this is one of the very few outlets in which I can talk to you, talk to a small group of people on this planet who enjoy what I do and who actually find value in 
what I do. So please know that I value each and every one of you. Every single like on a YouTube video or on an Instagram post, every little comment, even if it's just an emoji, whatever, on YouTube or on Instagram, all of that, you guys, we live in a world of machines. The machines reward the people who are engaging with the audience more, or rather, I should say it the other way around. Machines reward the people whose audience are more engaged in their content. So every little like, every little comment, it's more important than you guys realize. So thank you so much for taking the time to just like a video or a post on Instagram or just leave me a quick comment. It means so much. I know it sounds and it sounds, or rather it on the surface seems to be something so inconsequential, right? Like, oh, what does it matter if I leave a comment? Oh, what does it matter if I leave a little like? But the machines are watching and the machines will reward. And by what I mean by reward is not monetary reward, but let's say I post a video or a photo and a handful of people like it and engage with it, then it will then say, hey, a portion of her audience like this, so let me show this to another portion of her audience. If that portion of her audience likes it, cool, we'll show it to another portion of her audience. And if they like it, we'll start spreading her out into the rest of the world, right? So this whole stupidity of Instagram and YouTube not showing all of your content to all of your followers is just, but that's, that's just how it is. It's, that's the game. If you are looking to get started on social media, just be prepared. Be prepared. It's not necessarily a you problem. Slow growth, but it can be though. Because if you're uploading low quality shit all the time, well, then that is a you problem, right? If you post blurry photos of your microwaved bowl of mashed potatoes, right? Well... Unless you have a page that's all about microwave mashed potatoes, because you never know. <laughs> oh, social media. I will never understand you. Says the ancient hermit on the hill. Okay. Uh, we need to sparkle up the background, don't we? Should we, you guys? She's almost done, and I'm here. We're going to, well, that didn't even show up. I think, is that a sign that I need to not? But I want to, you all. I mean, just because you want to doesn't necessarily mean that you should, right? Yeah, I probably shouldn't. <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Just a little bit. Yeah, it totally wasn't necessary to do this. Unnecessary. That's okay. That's okay. Now, the question is, do I have an emerald? Let's see, I've got three greens that I can play with right here. We have a green that's actually called emerald green. So it's gonna be between parrot green, emerald green. I don't think that dark green's gonna work. That's pretty. This one's actually, uh, mm. I think a combo of the parrot green and the, it's pretty spot on with both of those. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Oh my God, so cute, <laughs> so cute. I need to put those back on. And I just, I love the little sound that they make when they're dangling from my ears. Listen, listen. Isn't that cute? I love my store. <laughs> Yes, shameless plug. I love my freaking store. Oh, I love it. Uh-oh, hold on. I need to fix Bentley's blankets. 
Okay, what did you do over here? Okay. All right. So let's do parrot green. Oh, I like the green. I like the green. Oh, that was a good call. Okay, so I don't. See, this is where. This is where that light green, that acid green that I've been lusting for would come in handy, but I mean, that works, right? Well, thank you, earrings, for inspiring me today. Thank myself <laughs> for inspiring myself. If you are stuck on a color palette, there you go. Use your jewelry, or if you're not a jewelry guy or girly, look at your outfit. What colors are in your outfit? Be inspired by that. Yes, even if you are wearing all beige. Here's one for you, for those of you who are wearing all beige, for instance, because I know neutral fashion is all the rage. If you are wearing all beige, use the colors of your outfit, beige, and then the colors of your under things. So if you're a beige person, who's secretly wearing, I don't know, neon red underwear. That would be a cool combination. Beige, neon red, and a bright orange would actually be kind of killer. So I'm just saying, your under things and your outer things. Are you wearing colorful socks? Pull the socks, pull inspiration from your socks. I like the green, that was a fun touch. I almost want to bring it somewhere else, but let's not. Let's let's leave it as is. I, I do. I'm I'm doing my damnedest not to put it anywhere else. We're not gonna put it anywhere else. We're gonna leave it as it is. It's very tempting, very tempting, but we're not gonna do it. What we are gonna do. Oh baby, what we are gonna do is pull out one of my favorite sparkle pops, the lime green one. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. So, I love this one. It's a yellow ink with green glitter. We're, we're doing all about the, the greens today. My manicure this week, all of it. I should have put my green ring on, but it's... Is it one of the ones that's taking a bath? Yep, my green ring is currently taking a bath. So, can't play with that one. I have a little dish back here. 
in which they are soaking. A little pre-bath soak. They get soaked and then they get scrubbed. And then they get sprayed. It's a big old thing, but you got to, you got to. Another Carla Ramble. I think I've never worked at a jewelry store, but I would love to be like a jewelry cleaner, right? Like if I worked at an antique store or something like that and jewelry would come in, I would love to be the one that cleaned the jewelry. I think that would be so satisfying, don't you? Oh, it, I okay, maybe not. Carla, shut it, but I just, oh. Seeing, you know, great, great, great grandma's ring come in. And it looks fine, right? It's gold and it's got a big honking, I don't know, ruby on it from back in the 20s. Gorgeous, right? It's looked great for years, but it's never been sparkling clean. And then you polish her up and then you see her and it's amazing. And then the customer comes in and sees how glorious this thing looks. Oh. I love it. I love it. I know. I'm just... I'm a magpie. I love shiny things, guys. Sparkle, sparkle, glitter, glitter, shine. Okay. So let's put some sparkle, sparkle, glitter, shine on this then. Some big mama sparkle, sparkle. Maybe not that big, but good. I like that. Okay, so she is just about done. I'm going to put a few little finishing touches on her uh, here and there, but otherwise, <clears throat> excuse me, otherwise she is done. I'm going to go ahead and stop talking though so that I can complete the page and then I will check in with you for the final view. If not later today, then because unfortunately at this part of the day I swapped some of my schedule today and I'm doing my coloring in the early evening as opposed to in the morning as how I plan to do it today but uh, so I may actually finish the page today and then do the final view and end of the video tomorrow morning when I have better light so anyways I'm going to put some final touches on this one and then she will be all done Okay, so I will see you a bit later. And here she is. She is officially complete, and I think she turned out cute. Is it one of my favorite pages? You already know, absolutely not. But this one was definitely a fun page. So I enjoyed it, the results are cute. What more could I ask for? I experimented a little bit, and I will be experimenting with the technique that I was attempting to create here again. So there you go, it was a learning experience, it was fun, it was all the good things. I hope that you enjoyed it. Um, what else is there to say? Nothing, everything you need to know will be down below, as always, of course. Uh, be bad, be good, I don't give a damn which. And I will see you in the next one. It's about damn time that I started coloring in Cosmetica, yeah, maybe, you know what? This may be a little bit premature, but I was thinking maybe I should challenge myself to complete this book this year. I don't know. Is it going to happen? Oh, maybe, maybe not. But at least let's aim for a third of it. <laughs> we, we, we aimed high and then we, we brought it right back down, right? But 
I would like to do a chunk of this book this year. It's just too fun and I don't want to abandon it like I tend to with my other books. And the reason I say that also is because I know for a fact that I will be releasing at least two books this year. And so that will give me a little bit more time, I think, to color. But I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'll change my mind. Maybe I'll release more than two books. I don't. It's it's early in the year. My mind is just it's just playing games on me right now. So anyway, that's the end. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.